This is lesson 13 in our Calculus 3 series, Continuity. In Calc 1, when we talked about continuity, we said f of x is continuous at x equals c if three things held. If limit as x goes to c, f of x exists, if f of c exists, and if those two equal each other. So if the limit as x goes to c of f of x is equal to f of c. This is our definition of continuity. But notice that it's enough to talk about just the third statement here. Because if we say f of x is continuous at x equals c if this holds, then we're assuming that both sides of the equal sign exist. So we really could just shorten the definition of continuity to just this third statement. Similarly, we have a definition of continuity for functions of two variables. For z equals f of xy, we say f is continuous at the point ab if the limit as xy goes to ab of f of xy is equal to f of ab. So again, this is assuming that both sides exist. This limit must exist and this function evaluation must exist. And we say that f is continuous on d if f is continuous at every point in d. For f of xy and g of xy continuous at a point, we have that their sum, difference, product, and quotient are also continuous at ab. And this follows from properties of limits. Note here that we're talking about g of ab not equaling zero for that quotient to exist. And we have that for f of xy continuous at ab and g of x, now this is just a function of one variable, g of x continuous at f of ab we can compose the two and get a continuous function. And we'll talk more about that in a couple minutes. Now some functions that we know are continuous are polynomial functions and rational functions. But let's talk about their definitions when we're talking about functions of two variables. A polynomial function of two variables is a sum of terms of the form c x to the m, y to the n. So c is a constant, m and n are non-negative integers. And here are a couple of examples of polynomials in two variables. And since polynomials are continuous, we can take limits by just plugging in. So for example, in the last lesson, we were talking about evaluating limits and showing that limits exist. Here, we know that this polynomial function is continuous on the entire xy plane. So this limit must be the same as what we get by plugging in 2 comma negative 3 to this function, right? This must be the same as f of 2 comma negative 3, which we get is negative 50. A rational function of two variables is of the form p of xy over q of xy, where these are both polynomials, and this is defined again where q is not equal to 0. And since rational functions are continuous wherever they are defined, we can take limits here by plugging in again, as long as the denominator exists. So limit as xy goes to negative 1, 4 of this rational function can be found by just plugging in x equals negative 1 and y is equal to 4, as long as the denominator is not equal to 0 at this point. And in this case, that's what we have. We have negative 9 over 13, and that's our limit. Let's go back to the compositions we were talking about earlier. Since we said that g of f of xy is continuous for f of xy and g of x, both continuous functions, we can get lots of continuous functions of two variables. For example, if f of xy is x squared plus y squared minus 1, that's a polynomial that we know is continuous, and g of x is, say, ln x, we know that's a continuous function, we can compose and get ln of x squared plus y squared minus 1, and then know that that's continuous wherever it exists. Another example, we could take f of xy to be 2x squared y plus 3, another polynomial that we know must be continuous, and g of x equals e to the x. This is a continuous function. So composing the two, we get e to the 2x squared y plus 3, and that's continuous. So you can see how we can get lots of examples of continuous functions of two variables by recognizing them as these kinds of compositions. And so g of x can be sine x, cosine x, etc. 
So determine the set of points on which f of xy equals sine xy minus radical y minus x is continuous. Well, we recognize that sine of xy is a continuous function because it's a composition of continuous functions. Same thing with radical y minus x. It's a continuous function because it's a composition of continuous functions. And then we're subtracting continuous functions, which is going to be continuous. So we know that this function is going to be continuous everywhere that it's defined. So really all we have to do is figure out what's the domain of this function. Now we have no restriction given by sine of xy because the sine function is defined on all reals. But we do have a restriction given by the radical. We need whatever's under the radical to be greater than or equal to zero. So we have to set y minus x to be greater than or equal to zero. That says y is greater than or equal to x. And our domain looks like this. It's the set of x, y in R2 such that y is greater than or equal to x. And that's the set of points on which this function is continuous. Now let's take a look at one of the examples we had in the last lesson where we showed that this limit exists and is equal to zero using the epsilon delta definition. Here we're going to show the limit is equal to zero using the squeeze theorem. So by looking at this limit along a couple of paths like y equals zero, x equals zero, x equals y, we found that this limit is equal to zero along those paths and we want to prove that it's equal to zero along any path. And so let's prove it now by using the squeeze theorem. We said in the last lesson that the squeeze theorem says, suppose that f of xy minus l in absolute value is less or equal to g of xy, and limit as xy goes to ab of g of xy is equal to zero. Then limit as xy goes to ab of f of xy is equal to l. So let's take a look at how this applies in this particular case. So our function f of x, y is 2xy squared over x squared plus y squared. Our limit l is equal to zero, so that doesn't show up here. And the squeeze theorem is saying, if we could show that this in absolute value is less or equal to some function g of x, y, for which we know the limit as x, y goes to zero, zero of g of x, y is equal to zero, then we'll know that the limit we're looking for is also equal to zero. So we've got to come up with a function g of x, y that fits. In other words, a function for which this is less or equal to g of x, y, and limit as x, y goes to zero, zero of g of x, y is equal to zero. And the key here is to make use of what we know about continuous functions. Because if we could set up g of x, y to be some continuous function that we know, like maybe a polynomial or some composition with a polynomial, then we'll be able to find this limit by just plugging in. And that's the key here. So let's start with our expression in absolute value here, 2xy squared over x squared plus y squared. And let's see if we could find this less or equal to a function that we know is continuous. Well, we could bring these absolute value bars in just to the x. Since the 2, the y squared, and the x squared plus y squared are all positive terms. And now since y squared is less or equal to x squared plus y squared, we know that this quotient y squared over x squared plus y squared is less or equal to 1. So now we're here, less or equal to 2 absolute x. And we know that the absolute value function is a continuous function. So if we let g of x, y be 2 absolute x, we have a continuous function here. We know that our expression in absolute value is less or equal to it. So we're good so far. And now we can show that the limit is equal to zero as x, y goes to zero, zero by just plugging in. Limit as x, y goes to zero, zero of g of x, y is just g of zero, zero because we know it's continuous function. And what's g of zero, zero? It's two absolute value of zero, which is zero. And so we found a g of x, y to fit the squeeze theorem for this limit. We found g of x, y equals 2 absolute x. We found our f of x, y minus l in absolute value to be less than that. And we found the limit as x, y goes to 0, 0 of g of x, y is equal to 0. 
Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, our limit is also equal to zero. And we'll conclude our lesson on continuity here.